In this video, I'm going to share a few of my thoughts and some of my processes as I paint this beautiful Jack Russell. Hi, I'm Marion Dutton, the artist behind Maz Art Studio. If you are enjoying the tutorials and the videos on this channel, please don't forget to hit that like button and I'd love it if you could subscribe to the channel if you haven't already done so. Pet portraits and portraits are my first love and I've already covered the underpainting stages of this Jack Russell in a previous video and that will be popping up in the cards above or there'll be a link in the description below. Now on to the video. You always need to make sure that your underpainting is completely dry before you move on to the coloured glazes. Once the painting's dry, I apply a medium over the entire area that I want to be painting. Now I use a product called Zest It, but any medium will do, such as a linseed or a walnut oil. And I like to wipe away some of the excesses as well. I begin most portraits in the eyes and using the underpainting as a map we start to block in the colours and by blocking in you really need to be thinking about this very much colouring book style. So I'll just sweep over the colours that I'm seeing on the reference photo and sort of colouring in where I've already done all the hard work in the underpainting stages. So at these very early stages, you really want to be thinking about just the blocking in colours. Try not to overcomplicate things by um, adding details such as tiny little hairs or anything like that. Really, that's far too early in the painting process to be doing that. So I'm constantly using the underpainting as a map, as a guide. I can see where I've put those lights and darks um, in the underpainting stages and I'm following along and sort of adding those tones and colours to match the underpainting. Now I'm applying the paint quite thinly. Um, I do, I'm quite happy if some of the underpainting actually peeks through, certainly in the earlier stages. And this allows you to not get too lost because you can still see your original underpainting underneath and it allows you to then just put the painting on as nice thin glazes tinting that underpainting. So all the real hard work is done in those earlier foundational steps. So as I continue through um, the glazing stages, um, I'm beginning to add white. Now always remember white is never white. Um, and although it appears that way on the um, camera, um, I have actually made a very pale gray. So against the backdrop, this lovely dark backdrop, that, that gray, that very light gray does appear to be white. So white is never white. And actually when I use black, I never use pure black either. That way then, if you always reserve the whites and the blacks, you can save those for those final details towards the end of the painting. I like to work in very small brush strokes. I'm using a very small flat from the Mazart brush range um, and this is just allowing me to just pick out some of the smaller details. 
what you're seeing here now is I'm using a darker grey and going over where I can see some of those shadows within the dog. So this size painting is 16 by 12 inches. Now this actual first colour glazes took me um, about four and a half hours. So um, again, you can see that I really do take my time sort of focusing and going around and making sure that I match the tones from the first colour glazes to the tones that I put in in the underpainting. I'd also like to apologise as well, you are seeing a little bit of vibrations um, sometimes within this um, video demonstration and actually we were having uh, workmen in while I were painting um, and they were actually banging some nails in and it was causing the camera to shake um, so I'd just like to mention that so you're not wondering what that shaking um, is, at least you now know what that actually is. So at this point I'm really trying to focus on the accuracy around the dog's paw. Now there's quite a lot of lost and found edges so the temptation is to want to paint something um, that's not actually even there or that you're not, you can't actually see. So what I was very aware of is allowing some of the underside of the paw to be dark enough to blend into the carpet underneath. So this is like a lost and found edge. Don't feel you have to spell absolutely everything out. Sometimes it's nice to leave a little mystery in your painting. So once I've blocked all the white part of the dog in, I start to move on to the black areas. Again, using that reference, um, sort of that underpainting as my reference and my map. And going back to what I said earlier about never using pure white and never using pure black, here you'll see that I've got sort of a purplish tone and I nearly always add a little bit of white to my black so that later on, 
if I want to use black it will actually stand out against the slightly lighter tones underneath. So again just to say don't use pure black, don't use pure white, don't show all your cards and um, save some of that towards the end of the painting. So it's only when all the blocking in stages are done, all that colouring book style is all done and completed, that's when I will move on and start to add little hairs and little details over the top. Now sometimes I will allow this stage to dry, I'll do the blocking in and then put all the hairs and things like that later on top on top of a dried painting, um, but occasionally I'll work wet into wet and in this particular case um, the underpainting or the under colours um, that I've already applied are still wet and so now I'm working into those with these tiny little hair strokes. And here's a, an up close view and you can see I'm using this tiny little um, hair like stroke to get these small details around the eyes. The brush I'm using is actually a dagger brush, it's a dagger bristle and I'm able to get some really nice fine details um, around the eyes. And again I'm working wet into wet. Really trying to push myself to go a little bit further with this pet portrait, really trying to get those extra details in and make it look very realistic. Now before I continue with the rest of this demonstration I'd like to just let you know about my um, pet portrait course. It is a very comprehensive course that will take you many many months to work your way through the chapters um, but if you are really interested in learning this particular method which is quite a proven method to get really consistent results then please do check out my pet portrait course online. I'm going to give you a little bit of some information from inside of the course you begin by logging on to mazartstudio.com and either logging in as an existing student or if you're not you can create a new account. Once you've logged on you'll be taken to your library there you'll be able to see any of the purchases that you have with Mazart Studio. I'm going to click on the pet portrait course and give you a little insight to what's inside. Welcome to my pet portrait painting online. I'm Marion Dutton and I'll be your tutor throughout this entire course. As you can see I cover quite a lot in the early chapters, just the getting started information, um, how to enlarge, how to trace, all these uh, materials that you need and all of this is accompanied with relevant documentation. Moving on to the animals now, we cover six dogs, three cats, and a horse in this complete portrait course and all of these are recorded in real time and all of them accompany with their relevant tracings and relevant reference photos. If that wasn't enough there's also a bonus chapter covering a further 10 animals again each accompanied with the relevant photograph, relevant tracings and my own paintings as a reference. Now let's get back to the painting of this beautiful Jack Russell. Now here you can see I'm really spending some time detailing around the eyes and here I'm actually using black. So because I haven't used black um, up until this point, that black's really starting to pop and show against the um, other colours. 
So you really want to take your time when you're detailing around the eyes. A lot of students leave off the important lid lines and the lower lid lines. And these are very, very important to get a realistic dog and pet portrait. So here you can see now I'm using pure white to put those final little sparkles in the eyes. This gives that lovely watery effect and of course really enhances the expression of the dog. So if this particular technique is something that really interests you um, and possibly you're interested in um, earning your own commission work then I really do suggest you check out my pet portrait course online. As well as the course you're also able to apply to join the Mazart tribe as well and share your coursework on there uh, with myself and with other students that are on the course. So here is the final painting of this beautiful Jack Russell and I really do hope you've enjoyed this demonstration and if you are enjoying the videos on this channel please hit that like button and don't forget to subscribe if you haven't done so already. It really does help the channel to grow and it does help me um, continue producing these paintings which really do take a long time to film and edit and put together for you. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you again in the next video.